Hey guys, it's Ollie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today I'll be talking about um, the life cycle of a garden snail. It has been requested for a very long time. Some disclaimers, as always. Um, this is about garden snails, not giant land snails, and not aquatic snails. This is also all gathered from wild populations, like studies of wild populations in the field. Um, I did note some things for captivity in this as well. Lastly, I am not a breeder. I do not breed snails. Um, I keep garden snails. I have had eggs in the past. It was kind of an oops clutch, but, um, I, I do not breed them myself. I know a lot of you guys want to. I won't be really going into what you do in captivity with them. I believe the incubation process is pretty much the same as a giant land snail. So Jay's Jungle, I believe, has some pretty good videos on that that I will put in the, one of these corners if I can. If not, I'll link it in the description below. Okay, so now that's all out of the way. All right, so we'll start this video off with a definition of what I mean whenever I say the life cycle. So the definition I will be using is from the Collins Dictionary and it reads as follows. The life cycle of an animal or plant is the series of changes and developments that it passes through at the beginning of its life until its death. So that's what we mean whenever I say life cycle. So I'll be going through those. So for just a generic list, um, everyone kind of seems to agree on seven steps in the uh, process of a snail's life. So you have birth and development, sexual maturity, uh, finding a partner, the mating process, gestation period, egg dropping and eggs hatching. So that is the full cycle of a snail's life. And of course, we're just going to start with the birth and development. So a snail is hatched with a transparent body and with a very delicate shell. They are born with those shells. Their bodies and their shell will develop and get color as they grow. And the shell will grow with the snail throughout its life. They are very delicate and very vulnerable in this stage. And typically in the wild, most of them will not survive past their first year of life. In captivity, of course, they have an advantage. They don't have predators. They don't have har like harsh environments. So in captivity, they do live um, quite a bit longer and there's more of a success rate. So when a garden snail hatches, it is very important that they have a source of calcium they can go to almost immediately. So their first instinct is to find calcium. Typically they will eat their egg. They'll even like kind of cannibalize on other unhatched uh, babies, which is perfectly normal for them. Um, but just if you are breeding and you have them, make sure that you are giving them a, a good source of calcium, give them multiple sources, lots of calcium. They need lots of calcium right off the bat. So garden snails are known to live anywhere between two and five years in the wild, but obviously they live a lot longer in captivity. Um, it just all depends on your species, your husbandry. If you um, got them, like if they were born in captivity or they're wild caught, all of those place factors. So there's not really a way to pinpoint how long they should live unless you know those certain things. I'm not really gonna be going into that here, but yeah. <laughs> So the next step in a snail's life cycle is obtaining sexual maturity. So of course, this will depend on your species of snail and your individual, but they are typically studied and found to reach sexual maturity within six weeks and five years of age. Of course, there are some that's less and some that's more. Again, it just all depends on the species of snail you are keeping. So most snails are hermaphrodites, meaning that they have both sex organs. However, unlike most animals that have both sex organs, they still choose to find a partner and mate with a partner, probably for uh, like diversity in the genes and whatnot. So something you should know about snails is they have very primitive eyesight, meaning that they can't really see, they're nearly blind, and they're also completely deaf. So how do they find a partner? So in addition to touch being a way to attract partners, they also do shoot love darts. So these love darts use chemicals produced by an individual to attract another snail ready to mate and are shot just before mating. The mating process can take a bit. Um, it kind of looks weird, but um, the best thing to do if you do see them, even if you don't want eggs, is just to leave them be. They will go their separate ways after a while. If you separate them, you could hurt them. So um, if you see this happening, just leave them alone. Don't mess with them. Um, and this could take a while, so don't get too worried. But after they're done, they tend to just go their separate ways. Now, since snails have both sex organs, 
both partners can give and get semen and can both have their own clutch of eggs. Now, that doesn't mean that they always will, um, just that they can. Some snails are also known to retain sperm from previous partners for long periods of time. So that's the mating process. So let's go ahead to the gestation period. So like always, you're going to get really tired of hearing me say this, but the gestation period heavily depends on your species. I can't be more clear about this. Different species have different things. I'm going off of generic studies that's most commonly found for garden snails. So after the mating process, it can take around three to six days for the eggs to actually develop. All right, so next we go to egg dropping or egg laying. So as I said before, it can take a few days for eggs to develop after successful fertilization. So after these eggs develop, um, your snail will probably start to lay them. Most garden snails can lay anywhere between 30 and 140 eggs per clutch. Again, this depends on your species. Your snail will typically dig a hole about one to two inches down and lay the eggs there. Your snail could take up to like a whole day of laying. If you think that they're laying eggs or you can see they're laying eggs, just leave them be. Don't mess with them. Just leave it alone. Go in for the eggs after the snail has left the site. To check for eggs, if you're not sure if they're laid, um, you can just kind of look around like the sides of the enclosure for see if they maybe laid them against the wall or something. But if they didn't, you can always very gently kind of dig through the substrate and check for eggs that way. Just be very careful. And I actually do this once a day whenever I'm misting them and whatnot, just to make sure I'm not missing any eggs. But yeah, so I recommend that when you find these eggs, that you do move them into a separate smaller container. I have never actually incubated eggs, so I recommend going and watching Jade's Jungle to know what to do. Uh, she has giant land snails, but I think that it's about the same process for uh, garden snails, just on a smaller scale. So the last stage is hatching. And in the wild, most of the eggs don't even survive up till this point due to predation or due to other environmental issues, like even rain or whatnot that will wash them away. But of course, in captivity, most of them will probably hatch. The eggs typically take anywhere between two weeks and one month to hatch. And again, when they hatch, it is very crucial they have that calcium. They're already growing before they hatched. So when they come out, food and calcium is very vital for them. But after they hatch, the cycle will repeat itself and it's just that over and over again. But that's pretty much it. A snail's life cycle is pretty simplistic. It's pretty generic. But yeah, I'm really sorry if this wasn't what you guys were really expecting, but that was the life cycle of a garden snail. As always, thank you guys for the suggestion. I really love it when you guys suggest things and give me ideas for this channel. I like to know what you guys want to see and hear about. I'm seeing all your suggestions. I'm trying to slowly work at them. I have plans for a lot of videos, but if you do have any more, drop them in the comments below. But as always, give this video a like for the algorithm. Comment down below if you have any more video ideas or anything that you want to see from me. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're into this kind of content or really any animal kind of content. I upload every single Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but you can hit the bell if you don't want to remember that. And as always, I'll see you next week. Bye.